Hey there, in this video we are going to look at solving by square root method. So solving by square root method is um, another form of solving quadratic equations. However, it's when it's in what we call vertex form, which looks similar to this, um, not necessarily when it's in standard form. So to solve a quadratic equation with square root method, um, it needs to be in this form where a, h, and k are numbers. And so we see essentially we have something being squared. It can be multiplied by a number. It can be added or subtracted by a number. Um, there could even be numbers over here on the other side of other than zero, and that's okay. But there needs to be an X only in the one spot in the parentheses being squared. Additionally, um, like I said, there does not have to be a zero on that side like there was with factoring and solving with factoring. So um, when we're working with square root method, the goal instead of getting zero on one side is going to be to get the part that's being squared completely isolated. So for example, this X minus H squared, we would want to get that part completely isolated and then we would undo the square by square rooting both sides. So we've looked at examples that did this when we had something already set up like um, for example, x squared equals 4. And when we had something with x squared equals 4, we would square root both sides. And when we square rooted both sides, the square and the square root undid each other, and we just had x equals. Remember, when we even root both sides of an equation, we have to consider the plus or minus, and then square root of 4 is 2. So our answer in that would be x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. So that was the very basic form of solving by square root method. And now we're going to look a little more complicated. So let's take a look at number one. Solve the following quadratic equations using the square root method. So on number one, um, like I mentioned, we want to get the portion that's being squared isolated. So to do that, we are going to start by undoing the addition or subtraction. And then we will worry about the three that's being multiplied in front. So we will add two to both sides. And when we do that, we have 3 times x plus 5 squared. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And then 25 plus 2 is 27. At that point, we divide both sides by 3. And if we divide both sides by 3, the 3 divided by 3 cancels out. And we just have x plus 5 squared on the left side. And then 27 divided by 3 is going to be 9 on the right side. Now that we have the portion being squared, isolated, we square root both sides to undo that square, and the square root and the square cancel out, and we just have x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. And then at that point, we've touched on this briefly previously, but we subtract 5 from both sides to get x completely by itself. But remember that negative 5 has to go in front of the plus or minus, so it will be x equals negative 5 plus or minus 3. And at that point, that's when we get our two answers. So one answer is going to come from negative 5 plus 3, and one answer will come from negative 5 minus 3. Negative 5 plus 3 is going to be negative 2, so that will be one solution. And then negative 5 minus 3 will be negative 8. So that's going to be our second solution. So our answers to this one will be negative 2 and negative 8. Now looking at number 2, we have a similar problem, but this time um, when we go to isolate x minus 2 squared, we see that there's a 1 fourth there instead of a whole number. So that will adjust what we do just a little bit. But we're going to start the same way. So we see this plus 8. We need to subtract 8 from both sides to start to get that yellow portion isolated. So now we have 1 fourth times x minus 2 squared equals 17 minus 8, which is 9. At that point, we multiply both sides by 4 because that will undo that denominator of um, divided by 4. And it will leave us with a 1 in front. And a 1 in front of the multiplication um, of the parentheses is not going to affect anything. So really, that cancels out the 1 fourth as a whole. Technically, you could divide by one-fourth, but the, um, people, when they do nine divided by one-fourth, will typically mess it up because you're dividing by a fraction. You have to multiply by the reciprocal, and people will accidentally um, mix that up and just try to do nine divided by four instead. 
or whatever the numbers are. So I would suggest multiplying by the denominator. Even if the top number is not a one, do that step first, multiply by the denominator, and then you can get rid of that numerator if needed. In this case, we're just left with x minus two squared equals 36. So at that point, we're going to go ahead and square root both sides. The square and the square root cancel out. And we have x minus 2 equals, and then we have to have plus or minus because we square root, even root both sides of the equation. The square root of 36 is the whole number 6. Now we get x by itself over here. x by itself um, comes from adding 2 to both sides. Remember, when we add 2 to both sides, we can't just add it directly to the number that has plus or minus in front. We're going to place this in front of the plus or minus. So this will be x equals 2 plus or minus 6. And that's where we go to getting our two answers. So one answer comes from 2 plus 6. One answer comes from 2 minus 6. 2 plus 6 is going to give us 8. And 2 minus 6 is going to give us negative 4. So our solutions for that one are x equals 8 and x equals negative 4. Now number 3 looks a little bit different because it's just x squared minus 16 equals 0. But it's really the same concept. It's just the x squared doesn't have a plus or minus in the parentheses with the x. So we're still going to treat it the same way. We'll start by getting rid of that minus 16 by adding 16 to both sides. So we have x squared equals 0 plus 16 is 16. We have the x squared isolated, so we just square root both sides of the equation. When we do that, we cancel out the squared and the square root. So we get x equals plus or minus, and then the square root of 16 is 4. Now with this one, there is no adding or subtracting to do at the end because it's just x isolated already. And so our answers are just going to be x equals positive 4 and x equals negative 4. And I do want to point out that this one we've solved many ways. So we have solved x squared minus 16 by using guess and check. We've solved it by using, if you memorize the diff perfect um, difference of perfect squares, then you can use that method and then set each factor equal to 0. Or we can use the square root method. So that's three ways, and we'll soon see a fourth way that we can actually solve that as well. Um, so keep in mind that it's possible to solve certain equations multiple ways. So in summary for the square root method, we want to isolate the squared piece, whether it's x plus a number, minus a number, just x squared, whatever it is. The part that's squared needs to be by itself. And then it's equal to whatever's on the other side. And then we square root both sides. So once we square root both sides, remember the square and the square root cancel out. And we just have the portion x plus a number, minus a number, whatever it may be. So we'll say x minus h is left here equals plus or minus whatever that square root of whatever that was over there simplified. Don't forget your plus or minus. That is key there. And then if the variable isn't already, we need to isolate the variable by getting rid of the number that's being added or subtracted to it. Remember, when you add that over or subtract that over, it has to go in front of the plus or minus. So that's where we get our answers, and then we would simplify whenever possible.